All right. So what we're saying, we're saying that true Rastafari, all right, let's put this up here, true Rastafari, we can say faithful and true, but we just say true Rastafari in the divine heritage context of true, where Yeshua HaMoshiach, our black Lord and Savior, says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can come to the Father, to Abba Kedus, Kedus Abba Tachin, except through Jesus Christos, except through Adonenu Yeshua or Yehoshua HaMoshiach. So when we say true Ras Tafari, right, true Ras Tafari, what is it? What is it really? What is really true Rastafari? Now, some would say that you can't really, I mean, no one can say what true Rastafari is. You, you, you hear some people give that so-called cop out. I don't know what they call it, cop out. But anyway, i got to look that one up. Um, but they give that so-called, you know, um, reply that, like, no one can really tell. I mean, who are you to say what true Rastafari is? You're right. I'm not one to say what, who, who or what true Rastafari is from my own opinion but from the teaching of the King of Kings, from the teaching of Kedamawi Haile Selassie. So the first point we want to say on true Rastafari is that true Rastafari, right, true Rastafari is not Afrocentric. True Rastafari, first and foremostly, is Ethiocentric, right, Ethiocentric. We could say Afro also in the, in the level but Afro, we have to connect this from the Ethio level to get the true understanding of what Afro, Afar, you understand, Ephra, Yim, really is. You understand? Don't confuse that. Some will confuse and say, well, you, you just said that Rastafari is not, is not um, Pan-African. It's not Pan-African primarily. You understand? It is Pan-African secondarily. It is primarily Ethiocentric. And you can just look at the name. Let's look at the name for a moment. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the name Rastafari. And this may be one of the reasons why many still, you understand, have a misinterpretation of what Rastafari mean because they're not being Ethiocentric. You're right, Ethiocentric. What's the next point about true Rastafari? Well, when we say Ethiocentric, we're saying according to Right, according to our divine heritage, right, according to our divine heritage. Now, what is our divine heritage? You understand? What is our divine heritage? And what's the connection of our divine heritage with being ethiocentric? You see, so th this is why teaching, the teaching of His Majesty is very, very important. And we'll say this once again and say this as many times as it needs to be said, and those who know the truth should also say it with I and I, and also say it in their speaking and teaching of the truth that Marcus Garvey, Marcus Messiah Garvey, right? Marcus Garvey has nothing to do with the Ethiopian World Federation. He has nothing to do with it. You understand? So when we look at the dysfunction in the organization, it could be because ones are not focusing on the truth. You know, and they're focusing on their feelings and their own ideas, but they're not submitting to Jah's righteousness, to his righteousness. Instead, they are trying to make their own righteousness. This is an interesting verse in Scripture, and we've used this before, and it still bears repeating again, and this is in Romans. Let's go to Romans for a moment. People say, why are you going to book Romans? Well, first of all, in the divine heritage, if you hear... And, and submit and obey the teaching of his majesty, he says, the Bible. He says, Yeshua HaMoshiach, Jesus Christos. He is our example. You understand? He is, he is our template. You know, and the King of Kings himself, in his own words, in his own voice, in his own utterance, time and time again, he clarified that and verified that. So anyone who takes on his name, you know what I'm saying? Must take on his name in truth. And if they take on this name, therefore, and, and not according to the teaching of his majesty, then they're not being true. Right? They're not being true. If you look in Revelation, it says about the false apostles and false brethren. You know what I'm saying? False brethren. It's not to be personal. You know what I'm saying? Because some might just be ignorant. 
you know what I'm saying, and need to be put on the right track, on, on the teaching of his majesty, you know what I'm saying, repent of the stray way in which they were, in which they were going, in which they were heading. But now, in, in this book, it's interesting because it's speaking about the Israelites here for a moment, and it's, there's so much here in the book of Romans. Now, Romans is interesting, and this probably goes with the next vid that we want to touch on, touch on, um, on, on um, the Gentiles and Rastafari, or in other words, the Europeans or white people, because amongst us as black or Ethiopian, Hebrew, ethnic Hebrew, black Jews, Rastafari, black people, Afro-Americans, Jamaican, West Indians, black folks who were brought over here from so-called Africa or greater Ethiopia, you know, this question about, well, what role do the Gentiles, white people in Rastafari really have? And even many Europeans or white people who recognize the divinity of his imperial majesty, who recognize the verity and the truth of the Ethiopian testimony and accept it in spirit and in truth, also want to know, because they go through situations with different brothers and sisters where some might accept them or accept them so much and different ones according to their own opinions. But what does the teaching of the King of Kings say? So according to the Bible, our, our glory, our, the, the, the foundation text for our divine heritage, chapter 10 of Romans, it says this, now, here in the Schofield Reference Bible, there is a subscription that reads, and it's the sixth part, but it's chapter 10, and here it says the apparent, the apparent, as we said in another vid, the seeming, it seems as though we've lost the promise, and the apparent failure of the promises, the promises, the hopes, the expectation to Israel explained by their unbelief. Now, this, this is not part of the text, but it's just the, the, um, the, the, the Bible, um, Schofield and the other Bible, not translators, but, but the other Bible people putting certain notes there, which are very, very accurate. If, if, you would, if you would study them for yourself, you'll find that truth for yourself. But the promises here, since the promise, they say promise is a comfort to a fool, right? Well, that's a Western white European Gentile phrase. So we should understand that that when a Gentile coming from white supremacy foundation gives you a promise, you understand as they've given so many people promises, natives of so many indigenous lands, promises, these promises have been lying. As the Indians, American Indians say, the Native American, they say, white man speak with forked tongue. You understand? They speak this side and this side at the same time. But Jah's promises, our God's promises, have been verified and affirmed by the coming and the presence of Kedemawi Haile Selassie. You see, that right there brings in the new name that we have in Revelation of Ras Teferi. Ras Teferi. Now, verse 1 says, Brethren, my heart's desire. Now, this is the Hawari of Aulos. This is the Apostle Paul. He says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God, Ha Elohim, Baruch Hu, blessed be He, for Israel, for Yisrael, is that they might be saved, that they might be Yeshua, in other words, they might be saved, right? For I bear them record that they have a zeal, that means a passion, you have strong feeling and strong emotion of God. They have a zeal of God. They have strong passion and emotion of God or for God in that, in that context, but not according to knowledge. Go open your Bible. Go to Romans, New Testament, chapter 10, verses 1 and 2, and read this for yourself. It says, for I bear them record. So we have, a, this is a witness here. You know what I'm saying? This is a witness here. For I bear them record that they have a zeal. And we see this a lot with our black people. You understand? Um, and, and different, whether denominations, mansions, groups, whether it's the Hebrew Israelites, whether it's the black Muslims, whether it's the Rastafari or some of the Christians, or, you know, our people, we have a, a zeal, but it's not always according to knowledge. You know, you're like, I feel this. I just, just feel this so strongly, so forth and so on. But is it true? You know what I'm saying? Or is it a figment of your imagination? Do you have knowledge? What do you know? Right? So 
they have a zeal, but the zeal is not an informed zeal. It's almost like what we talk about when we break down the three candles. It's that first candle being blown out. So it's, it's, it's not just belief, but it's blind faith that never goes to seeing faith because they never go and see these things. And the revelations never, the, the eye is never open to see these things for themselves. So they're just going off of other people's feelings, other emotions, you know, like, like the feeling of the crowd or whatnot like that, you know, a kind of a, a kind of an unconscious vampirism in a sense, because they, don't, they, don't, they have not touched the rock of truth yet. You, they, they really don't know. You understand? They really don't know. And these are the type of folks, when you question them, they get upset and angry. You understand? Because that anger is part of that ignorance, because they don't know any other way to really address it, because they've denied the fact that they don't know what they just don't know. Verse 3 says, for they being ignorant... So it's not I and I that says that some of our beloved ones are ignorant. You know what I'm saying? They, they being ignorant. All of I and I was ignorant. Even I and I was ignorant. You know what I'm saying? Before I and I sought that knowledge of Jah. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness. So they, they, they talk about righteousness, and this is righteous. It's amazing when a tune come on and it's a good tune, one to one will say, yeah, that's a wicked tune, that. Wicked. But I thought, this is what we, well, he's praising Jah, and you say it's a wicked tune. Oh, that's just what we say. Call good, evil, evil, good. But, but see, you would know that if you wasn't in Jah's glory. You understand? So it says, so they being ignorant. So they're ignorant. They're being nice about it. Not wise to salvation. For they being ignorant or ignorant of Jah's righteousness, of God's righteousness, and going about to establish their own righteousness. You know, they're going about to establish their own rights, and they want to do a next vid, actually, that Rastafari, that I and I, it's interesting, we live, or we seek to live natural in every way. You know, when you really deal with Rastafari seeking to be true to those principles of natural liberty and natural clothing and natural food and try to be in natural surroundings and natural herb. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it's a little hydro, but still, you know what I'm saying? Natural, all the stuff natural and everything, yet they are not living according to natural law. You know what I'm saying? They're saying, I'm Ethiopian, I'm Rastafari, I'm Ras, nickname, 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 but still they're going around under Babylonian artificial law, especially as a Negro, black, or colored, you understand, carrying around European white people's names, Smith, Jones, and Johnson, and then they're wondering why, well, how come Africans or Ethiopians, in a sense, don't accept us as Ethiopian? Because, in a sense, we're not, we're not I'm not going to say trying hard enough, but we're not doing John's will. You understand? In other words, we are only, it's almost like a partial birth. You know, you're born in the consciousness, but still you're holding on to, to um, artificial status. And that that's kind of connects us to the whole legal um, operation of the law. When we talk about in spirit, which is the spirituality, and in truth, that's the reality even here in the temporal, in the temporal world. You understand? So we're speaking about spiritual law, Jah's law. But then also now it translates to this truth level of how we even operate in this so-called global, in this global structure. Do we still keep up speaking about international morality? What happened to that? Collective security? Human rights? Do we even know what the human rights are? And then once you know what the human rights are, because the UN, all the nations say that, yes, everybody should have these rights. They recognize it. They don't give you no human rights. You and I, I and I have to do the work. But if we don't know that, if we're ignorant of that, we're going to go about to establish our own righteousness. You understand? Now, there's a footnote here that says the word righteousness here, and in the past is having marginal references to this, it means legal, legal or self-righteousness, according to the the translated, the futile effort of man to work out under law a character which God can approve. Now, that's like saying, well, you know, what ones and ones say, well, if you, um, being a Rastafari is, well, if you dress like this or if you eat this kind of food, even though dressing, 
the, our our true garments plays a role. If we look in Torah, you understand, John has given us certain garments, which would be translatable in this time of Revelation as our Ethiopian garments. But where are we with that? We've been set forth to import, you know, some of the highest and best quality clothing, but then we recognize that a lot of our people, even the so-called Rastas, you understand, have gone backward and now are affirming Babylonian products coming out of Europe, and then we wonder why Africa and Ethiopia, you understand, is still playing catch-up because instead of our dollars and investment going to Africa or Ethiopia or being connected with that community, we're still caught up over here. And I think the name, the name, the name and the lack of a title, you understand, because Ras is a title, like my, my, I trans, uh, I, uh, what they call it, um, change the name, you know, so forth and so on, and it's Rasi Adino Seferi. But Ras there would be my title, you understand? And Iadinos or Yadinus or Iadonis, anglicized, is my name, and Teferi or Tafari, the name of the man child, the son of man, that is I and I family name because it's through him, that one, according to Revelation, that fulfills that word for us in this time, which is the true Rastafari revelation, right? But now, even with the revelation, the revelation is showing us something, but it should also be showing us, well, what do we have to do? You know what I'm saying? What is it that we have to do fully? You know what I'm saying? This is a way of life. You know what I'm saying? But the way of life must be according to the knowledge of him, the teaching of his imperial majesty, which is our divine heritage. So once I've gone about to establish their own righteousness and have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God, let's just ask a question here. What do you think the righteousness of God is? You don't have to say it out loud, and I can't hear you. This is a video. You know that. You understand? But just, just, just answer that. What is the righteousness of God? Now, a lot of folks would probably say, well, you know, doing good, not hurting nobody, you know, um, you know something that you do. That's what a lot of people would say, almost like it's Old Testament, like they got the veil still over their eyes. The righteousness of God is Yeshua, is our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos. His imperial majesty testifies to the righteousness of God or to his salvation. According to Scripture, God has shown his salvation. He has verified that both in word and indeed, this is how we as the true Rastafari, we know him. This is how we truly know him, because of this word, this biblical word. Not just because we heard it in a reggae song. That should have made you curious to check it out for yourself. You know what I'm saying? But it's because of his word. That's why it says next verse, verse 4, for Christos, or the Mashiach, even the black Messiah, who they have fought against, these antichrists, for the Mashiach, is the end, or more correctly, the fulfillment, fitame. Fitame means fulfillment. Some places they translate end, but it's not end as mecherasha, but it's end as fitame. He is the fulfillment of the law for righteousness, the law that concerned righteousness, right relationship. We have right relationship with the Father, Kedus Abatachin, in and through Yeshua HaMoshiach. You understand now, some folks may not get that, but that's what the King of Kings says. That's the teaching of His Majesty. So even if they don't understand it in our speaking, they need to find out. Don't dismiss it now and still say, yeah, I'm Rastafari. Okay. All right. You, you've heard the word. There's no cloak anymore. You understand? For the Moshiach is the fulfillment of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Now, we already have dealt with this, but if one is a newcomer to this, we've gone to the root of what the word believe means, and we come to the word mamen, both in the Hebrew, the Hebraic, and the Ethiopic, or the word that you might be more familiar with, the amen, the amen. And the amen in Revelation chapter 3, verse 14 Yo, let's just go there for a moment, is one of the names of Christ. So even this ancient, ancient, ancient Ethiopian, Egyptian colony link is right there in the word and says, and to the angel, the Melach, 
of the Church of the Laodiceans, which means judgment or justice to the people, write, these things sayeth the Amen, the faithful and true witness. So here we come again. When we say we are Rastafari, it must be in the Amen, in the faithful and the true. The faithful and the true. So our witness of the King of Kings must be faithful and true in order for I and I truly to be taken on the name Rastafari. Otherwise, it's kind of a form on a spiritual level of identity theft when you think about it. And, and, and some people might dismiss it, but it's very serious. It's very serious because we'll go into other areas of Scripture where it talks about like those, those false brethren and others who have crept in amongst us. You know, but if you're in the Word, the Word is a discerner of the thoughts. So if you're in the Word and the Word is in you, you